It goes without saying that Photoshop is a program that many people depend on for their careers or schoolwork. Unfortunately, if your paycheck or grade depends on something that's not running optimally, it could end up causing you a lot of headaches and heartaches. Well, today we aim to make you Photoshop ache free. Let's help you improve Photoshop's performance. This is DIY in 5. Hey everyone, my name is Trisha Hirschberger and you are watching DIY in 5. Today we're going to cover five ways to make Photoshop run faster. If you were to ignore everything that I'm about to say except for this statement, you would still come out ahead. Upgrading your RAM will have the biggest impact on your Photoshop performance. Serious edits typically call for larger files, like RAW files, for example. And when you're editing an image file, your PC uses RAM as its fast access workspace. If the workspace RAM capacity isn't big enough for your file size, plus some extra, your PC will use your hard drive as a cache, also known as virtual memory. Virtual memory is super slow compared to RAM. Another way to say this is to avoid it like the plague. Having what is known as a scratch disk or temporary storage on a hard drive will severely impact our ability to move through edits quickly and efficiently. Even when we compare RAM to SSDs, RAM is simply much faster. When we edit, we don't want to wait for the hard drive as it will impede our workflow. Workflow interruptions interrupt creativity. The old Photoshop rule was users should have two to three times the file size and available RAM capacity. So if you have 16 gigabytes of system memory, up to half can be used by your operating system and general office applications. PCs these days have 64 gigabytes and 128 gigabytes available for maximum memory. Users can easily add a 64 gigabyte dual channel kit if they plan to do a lot of photo and video editing. Second, don't forget to raise your memory usage, or more plainly, you will have to configure Photoshop to use more RAM. By default, Photoshop uses 70% of available RAM, but secrets, this can be adjusted. From Photoshop Preferences, click on Performance and then adjust the slider upward to allow Photoshop to use more RAM. It's important to note that Adobe advises against allocating more than 85% of your computer's memory to Photoshop. So when deciding how much to purchase, find out what your basic tasks, such as email, require without Photoshop in use. I think it's best to go even more conservative than Adobe, so you have some multitasking wiggle room as well. Third, if you still use a mechanical drive, please upgrade to an SSD. Typically, the files that are edited are, are large in size. Again, think of workflow. When we boot, start Adobe, load and save image files, these times will be drastically reduced. God forbid you still run out of RAM and Photoshop has to access the scratch disk. An SSD will feel an order of a magnitude faster than even the fastest HDD. For example, an NVMe M.2 SSD is over 30 times faster. Obviously, we would want to solve all of our memory issues via RAM, but if we have to improvise, SSD efficiency is the way to go. Fourth, close all other programs if possible. Remember, even though Photoshop allocates 70% to RAM and you went in and told Photoshop to use up to 85%, it still has to compete for RAM. Plan for the future and get more capacity than you probably need. This will reduce the need to close background apps or worry about multitasking performance degradation. There may be times when you're editing a photo and you see Final Cut open. Instead of just dropping it in your project folder, you say, I might as well drop this on my timeline. Final Cut is extremely memory and storage intensive, so it's better to close Final Cut and finish the Photoshop edit. Please don't get me wrong, your weather widget may not need to be closed. However, your more intensive apps should be. And do I even need to mention your Last of Us game revisit? Fifth, some refer to this final step as don't clutter. Photoshop is extremely robust. They offer a ton of preferences, such as brushes, fonts, and patterns, among other things. But it also has an impact. The more you download, the more memory has to keep track of, which can lead to sluggish performance. It's best to keep it simple. Download a selection of fonts and brushes that really define your work style. In the long run, it will be more efficient to be sparing with your selection of tools, adding and removing them as needed. This is preferable to carrying a lot of dead weight that largely goes unused and serves only to slow down your application. Let's recap. Photoshop is going nowhere and its good reputation is well-deserved. If you do find yourself facing sluggish performance while editing, always check the RAM usage. If loading files and saving files takes a long time, you probably have a slow boot time as well. Switch out that HDD for an NVMe M.2 SSD and that is a game changer. 
Before doing these two steps, try to baseline your system by running only Photoshop and no other programs. If you have decluttered your Photoshop, you are due for a hardware upgrade. Well, now that we have optimized Photoshop, it is time for me to finish a few photo edits for a small magazine named Vogue. Their schedule is so aggressive. Just kidding. I'm actually working on my Super Nintendo World vlog. But as always, it's a me, Trisha Hirschberger, and I'll see you next time with more DIY in 5.